Hi all, uh, delighted to have Anirudh talk about cross-modal memory networks in today's session. Take it away. Yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks Pranav. So uh, as Pranav mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, cross-modal memory networks for automatic radiology report generation. And again, this is also a pretty recent paper. This was published in April, 2022. So before going into what cross-modal memory networks are, how they are useful for automatic report generation, I just wanted to give a glimpse of what exactly is radiology report generation. So it's like pretty intuitive as what the name suggests. So you're given a radiology uh, chest X-ray or any medical image, and you want to generate the radiology report corresponding to that. So this is very similar to an image captioning. This thing like where you have an image and you're writing a summary or a caption for that particular image, just that there are a few extra things that's required in a radiology report. For example, any report, as you can see, I've written, I've uh, added three different reports where you can find both uh, two individual parts called findings and impressions where findings consist of all the a description about all the important features that they can actually find what is normal and what is abnormal in the report. And impression is more like a summary of the finding. And when you are expected, so a radiology report is also pretty long compared to an image caption. So other than that, this is the same paradigm that we're using throughout and image captioning, the architecture of using an encoder decoder model to have the image encoded and develop the text through the decoder, generate the text through the decoder is what, decoder is what we'll be doing. Uh, the data sets used here are uh, two uh, uh, commonly used data sets, IU X-ray, Indiana University's uh, chest X-ray data set and Mimic CXR. So the IU X-ray is pretty small compared to the other one. It has only around 7,400 images and corresponding reports. Whereas the Mimic CXR is the largest publicly available radiography data set. It has about 377K uh, images and 200K plus corresponding reports. Uh, so the motivation, so what do we actually want to do here and why do we have to use a cross-model mapping? So as we can see, uh, the radiology report generated here has a lot of important or requirement that a text and image are mapped properly so that you are able to generate the report with the clinical terms and all the other medical terms properly. You can see the image uh, added below there and the parts highlighted for uh, the uh, corresponding text and the words uh, text on the right side and images on the left side. And it's important for the model to actually understand this, to be able to generate the reports properly. And hence, this is why uh, cross-model mappings are important. I'll explain why cross-model mappings actually outperform using two different memory networks, one for images alone and one for text alone, but I'll explain that later. Yeah, so the existing approaches for radiology reports are like, uh, like any other, uh, Few, a few works include any, like just like any other image captioning techniques, like where you have an encoder, CNN encoder to extract the features from the image and an LSTM or transformer decoder to actually generate the uh, text given the particular image features. So the problem with this, as I already pointed out, is that uh, the direct image captioning modules don't work for a few other reasons. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that next, but few other reasons is that you don't get quality annotated data that's one problem. And also, if even if you have annotated data between images and text, how do you actually use it? That is a big question mark. There's no a given model that is done very well that people are actually satisfied with it and they use it for every time. And other uh, reasons are that, uh, as I pointed out, that, uh, the radiology reports have a fixed pattern and, uh, and they're pretty long compared to normal text that's generated. So the image captioning model separately, standalone image captioning models don't exploit this pattern in the radiology reports. So is that something that we can do using the CMN is what we are trying to do. Uh, the proposed approach is actually to use a cross-model memory network as the name suggests, it's trying to map the two different modalities and it's trying to learn a representation for the images and the text. And the uh, new learned representation is passed into an encoder decoder framework and that is used for generating the tokens at every time step. And uh, just like the image captioning uh, paradigm here also, we try to maximize the uh, uh, log likelihood of the 
predicted token at each time step given the all the other uh, tokens yeah so now i'll go into the individual components of the setup and uh, i'll go like one component after another and i'll put them all together at the very end so that it's like easier to see what we have seen till now so the first one is the uh, visual extractor so it's like a basic uh, cnn uh, extracting module where you have given an image you try to extract the image features from it in one nice difference you can say is that you have patches here and you extract features for the patches and not for the image as a standalone this thing and the uh, features of the patches are concatenated row wise to get different sequences x1 x2 dot dot lxs that uh, is the output we get from a visual extractor so how exactly does this cross modal networks work so the, any cross modal network takes in two different sequences as input first one being the x, x representations generated from the visual extractor second uh, is the textual features where uh, you have the embeddings of the tokens from the ground truth uh, all the they both are actually passed uh, into the cross modal network and you get a representation rx and ry corresponding to the x and y pass how exactly we get the rx and ry is actually uh, we'll see in the next few slides and also one point to note here is that the memory network itself has n different memory vectors it's actually storing and this n is a hyperparameter which actually we discuss how exactly they affect the performance of the model and uh, in any cross modal network how do you actually get the rx and ry given the x and y is through two different steps called memory quer querying and responding and i'll explain both of them very briefly in the next few slides yeah so so the main uh, highlight of this particular paper is that they have a common uh, memory cross modal network instead of having two individual memory networks for the uh, visual features or textual features so they reason out this helps in uh, getting better alignment between text and images because uh, in this approach they push both the visual uh, the text features and the image features to the same latent space or the same representation space whereas in the other uh, having two different standalone models they have two different uh, representation spaces and they'll have to somehow learn to align features between the two different spaces and that's going to be a difficult task so what they try to do here is that they'll push the given input features into a common representation space and they only take k uh, so the as we saw before the memory network has n different memory vectors out of which they only select k different vectors based on the distances as shown here the k here is again a hyperparameter and uh, the number of memory vectors that we actually choose to make the modifications and get the rx and ry is uh, uh, rx and ry is do affect how uh, good the generated caption or generated report is uh, so that is basically like memory querying where you get the distances given the x vectors uh, uh, y vectors and the m vectors and based on this ds and dt you take the top k vectors from there and you do a weighted sum based on this particular vectors the ws and w2 uh, w2 you get from the ds and dt correspondingly and you generate the rx and ry so this rx and ry is like what you now pass as input to the encoder decoder framework and you expect the model to generate the text output uh the encoder decoder setup is pretty straightforward it takes in the rx and uh, rx and gives you an intermediate uh, z intermediate state z as output and that intermediate state uh, state along with all the predictions done till that time step is passed as input to the decoder and you expect to predict the uh, token till then uh this is the full setup uh, i'll try to so we already saw all the portions of this you saw the visual extractor first giving you the uh, access features then you had the individual tokens giving you the yt features then you pass the, pass them both into the memory network cmn which does the querying first calculates the ds and dt vectors and then you go into the uh, responding part from uh, the ds and dt vectors you get the rx and ry and this rx and ry is passed into the transformer decoder and that predicts the uh, token for the time step t so as expected uh, the uh, laws and training that we use here is we want to maximize the uh, prediction probability of each token given the sequence predicted till now and the parameters is like any general image captioning technique that we use uh, 
now i'll go into a few results and explain a few analysis that we have seen in this paper so first thing as i pointed out we had two different data sets where they are trying to uh, compare the models performance on so there are three different models here where uh, the base model is vanilla transformer that's being used to make the uh, report generation the base plus memory uh, model is what i compared before having two standalone or two different memory networks for uh, the individual visual features and text features apart from the base model and the cmn is our uh, corresponding model so you can see that the base plus cmn and base plus memory transformer uh, memory model outperforms the base model which hints at the fact that using a memory network does help you to come up with better uh predictions before going into the comparison between the models uh the metrics used here are common nlg metrics and clinical efficacy metrics bl stands for the blue score uh mtr is the meteor score and rg is the rogue score uh they are pretty commonly used for any uh let's say a sequence generation task with text and if you want you can look it up or uh uh the paper also has definitions just in case if you want to have uh this thing uh these are a few observations from this particular table we observed that both the base plus memory network standalone memory networks and base plus cmn outperform the base model uh the standalone vanilla transformer model the base plus cmn also outperforms the two different uh having the base plus mem model which has two different uh, memory networks which again hints at the fact that using a common representation does help in a way to generate the text and uh, another important fact to note is that the comparison between the data sets alone where you see that having two different data sets the performance gain is much better when we have lot more data examples to learn the representations from uh this is a, a comparison of the proposed model with all the other state of the art models so uh you can again see that it outperforms all the existing state of the art models uh, i'll try to quickly wrap it up here so a uh, few other uh, observations from that particular table is that uh, it outperforms the cotension model the cotension model is the one which uses instead of learning uh, the cross modality textual and image alignments they have a direct alignment they which they try to use and it shows that the cmn using the technique to learn the representation of rx ry actually helps to perform better second one is that uh, this model is very simple it does not have any high funda stuff that's going on here compared to the other state of the art model that exists in the table there and it still outperforms them and it shows that uh, the other models like are not making use of the inherent features of the uh, uh, re radiology reports like the patterns that exist and the type of words used etc and the very last observation that we can make is that uh, in our model you can observe that we have uh, the memory being used at the encoder and the decoder side whereas a comparative state of the art model was r2 gen which uses only memory at the decoder side and it outperforms them and it shows that using uh, the memory networks to aid the encoder also helps to generate better uh, uh, textual uh, this thing i'll quickly go through the these experiments also so first i had already mentioned at the very beginning about the number of vectors that you use in the memory and that is a hyperparameter that they had to choose and as expected as you increase the number of memory vectors the performance does increase but the catch here was that it did not uh, it was not a monotonic function is like it didn't increase continuously as you kept on increasing and so they saw that after a particular threshold of 1024 uh increasing the size didn't matter much this is very similar to what we saw with i think before the skip connections and all came with the neural networks like if you can't if you keep increasing the size of the model does not mean you get better performance the similar is a case with the queried vectors also the k hyperparameter that we discussed for uh, getting the rx and ry uh where until 32 you get good performance like when you keep increasing the number of uh, memory vectors based on which you get the representation but beyond 32 which started uh, not performing well on the test set this is basic case of uh, overfitting where the model tries to actually fit the exact data given there and the generalization error is going to go up uh finally they do show how exactly the cross modal memory network does better in aligning the text and the visual features so they compare the we compare given a particular image and the corresponding report 
we compare the uh, get, uh, generated text and the corresponding weight it gives or where it how it aligns itself to the generated image and you can see that uh, among all the three models discussed here the cmn model aligns it appropriately so for example when it's talking about severe cardiomegaly it actually points to the correct position on the image rather compared to the other particular models and it like consistent through other uh, medical terms also so uh, that is my this thing so you can see that it is uh, actually learning the alignments better and that is helping them to make better predictions yeah thanks awesome thanks anurag